What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Um, my name is Rachel Nolan, and I'm the owner of Weaving Luxury LLC. And um, Weaving Luxury started when my, for my daughter, okay? My daughter was about five or six years old. And uh, I looked at her. And, and if any of you have kids, you know, you look at your kids, you pay attention to what they look like. So I'm staring at her face, and I go, what's wrong with your face? She's like, nothing. She do, something's wrong with your face. So I keep looking and I notice that her eye, brow and all of her eyelash, you know, her left and left side of her eye are missing. Now, I, I you know, know a little bit about um, just different things that are going on, medical things. I went to pharmacy school for a little bit, but psh, you know, entrepreneurs go life. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I just kept watching her. And as I was watching her, I noticed that she would just sit there and she would do this. Or she would sit there and she would do this. She was putting out her hair. In and out. She had a disorder called trichotillomania. Something that I used my biology degree in cosmetology to help me figure out because with those two things together, it's really, really important to, to help her. You know, kids are cruel. They pulled her ponytail out of school. She had bald spots. It was a struggle, you know? And so I decided to start incorporating hair extensions into her hair. And that's where we even love you started. Um, from that point, I realized that it solved a problem for her. Trichotillomania was um, incorporated into the DSM before 2004. So it's a fairly new, I would say, new disorder that they um, added to that. But there's no cure for it. There's not, it's not something that she can, can fix or stop. You know, we, we started with anxiety medication. We gave her depression medication. And none of that was working. So me, as a, a woman and as a mom, everything inside of me said, I'm going to fix this. And I did. Her hair right now is long and beautiful. Now, it didn't stop her from picking, but now she has extensions to pick on. And that helps her because her confidence is boosted. She's able to express herself creatively now. And she's just amazing. I mean, God, if you guys could meet her, I'm telling you, you know, she's in a little something like me. So I'm <laughs> just joking. <laughs> but however, that is where Weaving Luxury started. And today, Weaving Luxury now is about creative expression. It comes back to learning that there's a, a little girl who has this, just pulls her hair out, does not know what to do to bloom into this creative, beautiful, artistic young lady. And so now that's what I aim to do. I aim to uplift positivity. I aim to increase beauty on the inside and the out. Because when I think, when people think of weed and luxury, I don't want them to think about hair units. Yes, I sell wigs, it's a commodity. But weed and luxury is so much more than that. It's so much more than that. At our core, we believe in the creative minds. We know that the creative minds are the ones who are the brave creative minds that are willing to go out and wear that red suit in a room full of black suits. The, the person that's willing to wear those big earlobe earrings, even though people look at them weird, those are the creative minds. Those are people who innovate, and that's what we support. So if there's something that I could use from you guys today, you got every last person in here today. None of you need a wig, but all of you can help our creative expression. You can. All you have to do is check out the YouTube channel, subscribe, and share a video, any one of them. That's how you guys can help me today. Because I share my life on my YouTube channel. I share my life, I show y'all everything. I show you my daughter. We talk about her ailment. I give my personal experiences on it. And what I would love to have is a team that would help support that business. Somebody who believes in creative expression. Somebody who understands that we the luxury is not just about hair. It's about more than that. And that's what I need for today. I know we're in 10 minutes, but it don't take 10 minutes to tell y'all how much it means to me. You know, it, it just doesn't. Um, that is what I have to say. Is there any questions? Is there anything you guys want to dive in or, you know, how was it? I don't know where else to go. I'm, I need to see him finish stuff. There you go. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. I need that. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay, we're having a sound issue. Pause. Yes, it's your right. How did you do it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody. I just kept going. <laughs>
This. No, I want to hear the questions too. The volume is not on. Okay, what I'll do is I'll play the volume on my phone, but I want to utilize the time because this this there is nothing more important to me than getting the feedback from you guys. When I crafted this speech for y'all, or this not even the speech, when I when I thought about what I was gonna say, all I could think about the people who I was speaking to. None of y'all wearing no wigs. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and even if you need a wig, you're not really looking for a hair unit, a hair system. So what I had to do was help you guys believe and where I'm going. You know, just think about where, where, what does that mean to wake up to? You get, I do it. Does anyone know somebody with trigger to a mania or somebody who possibly, you know, things like that? Um, there, that's that's where my it's where my heart is, and, and I'm not perfect at it, you know. But that's what my heart is. I, I'm following the footsteps of the greats. Like I, I study Nike, I study freaking Apple, I watch Steve Jobs every single day. Because I really believe, I don't want what we stand for to change ever. There's so much going on in this world today. Like they're so busy, I mean AI is about to take over. People think that you're gonna be driving your own car, but dude, you're not gonna even be driving your own car. So how do we exist? How do we remain important? The weave industry is really, I mean, it's a great industry because a lot of people are in it, but you can be convoluted in that. You can disappear. And I don't want people to just be buying hair. I don't want to get in that rap race. Hey, I got the best weave and I can put it on the best. And yeah, this is a wig, can you tell? You know, yes, okay, all of the above. I can ask all of those questions. But really, none of that is gonna create lasting customers. None of that is gonna create lasting people who actually care about why we exist. So. Um, and that's okay. We're gonna let them go ahead and get the questions. I'll use my phone for the volume when we get finished and I'll push play on there. We'll try to sync it up the best. It'll be a little off, but you can get the gist, okay? That works? Um, how many wigs are, like, how many, what's the market like? How many wigs are Okay, wigs? so um, right now from the research that I've been doing from uh, 2019 to 2024, there, it's like the CAGR is 10%, which is like a $10 billion increase in the next four or five years. So the market is on the rise right now. I can't tell you that it's not going to decline, though, to be honest, because um, hair is a commodity, period. And how many people are giving it away? We're running out. It's like real <laughs> hair. Or real hair. Fake hair. Human hair. Yo, you can't run out of synthetic weave. You can make that. But human hair, if you want real good quality human hair, it is definitely, um, it's definitely something that's not readily available. Yes, you have people who are donating their hair but it takes time to grow hair. So there is a, a limitation there. It's a lot out there, but after 2024, I can't, I don't know how long it's gonna last, really, I don't. So I'm trying to tap in right now. Well, can you take short hair and make it longer, Tom? Or? <laughs> okay, so what do you want, Tom? Well, you know what, I mean, I understand that question, it makes sense, but you can, that, that's the object, is to take the shorter hair and make it longer, but then you have to install. You can't take a single strand and make it seamless, so that's the problem. So if you connect those hairs, when you comb, it's just gonna break where you connected it. You know, does that make sense? Okay. Go ahead, whoever. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question, so like, you designed your wig, right? Absolutely. So have you, with the like, work platform, have you thought about connecting with some of the manufacturers that are out there to be a designer for them? And to, to push your designs through their outlets. So like Andre is a manufacturer that has the medical line mm -hmm. wigs. So they, they deal with that mm -hmm. um, in addition to the cancer side of things. So mm -hmm. since you have a specific market, have you thought about maybe getting um, together with some of those providers to be able to get your designs out there to a broader market since they have that market already? Um, so 
my business exists because of trypsinolamia and alopecia. And of course, I definitely will assist cancer patients. That's not, but my goal really is not to dive into that market because there's a lot of stipulations that comes with the medical side of here. But not, not the medical, mm -hmm. but just because I might deal with sickle cell and sickle cell anemia. Mm -hmm. and, um, like the, there's a girl who's like the Miss America, they have right. a pageant of that, and she speaks and represents their brand. Mm -hmm. So they're very much in that arena. Mm -hmm. And so they have different designers that make and design their goods. So okay. they're just as a, a an additional platform of growth that might be something that is of your design project. Oh yeah, I would definitely look into that. I'm a part of the TLCs, the Tricky Southern Media um, Foundation. Mm -hmm. So um, and I do, I utilize that. I'm registered on there as, as a um, licensed cosmetologist. So if someone does have trichotillomania in the area and they want to receive the services, I'm, I'm registered. So they can look me up and say, hey, she knows this. She's going to understand that my consultation should be private. No one wants to go sit somewhere with phone spots. You know, it's not really a, the best conversation to have. They want somebody who's sensitive, somebody who's sensitive to what they're experiencing. I mean, it's, um, I don't know what, what, if any of you have ever had the experience of you lost your hair. Losing your hair is, at least for my daughter, it was traumatic for her. It is, in our society, we have such a big stipulation on how hair should be, what it should look like, who should have hair, who shouldn't have hair. But as a child, she didn't understand. You know, she didn't understand. So that was, I mean, I definitely will look into that, but, um, cause it's, it's really important. That, that'd be great. That'd be great. I'm, I'm not opposed to any venue where I can be helpful because beauty on the inside and out is so important. Like I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not going to allow a client to come into um, and, and consult with me. I, I really want to talk to the woman as a person. Like I, I encourage that person to sit in that chair and look in the mirror. And they're like, well, what do you want me to look in the mirror for? I look at myself every day. I said, I know. But when you look at yourself, what do you see? Well, I see me. While well, I watched this um, show, um, La Reina de Sul is pointed this out. And, um, and in that show, when she was at her worst times, she would look in the mirror and she would see this woman. And this woman was bad. I mean, but it was her. And that's what I want you, I want them to do. I say, I tell them, look in the mirror and see the best you. See that woman. What her lips look like. What, her, what does her face look like? Tell you, now, what do you look like? What does your hair look like? Because that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be. You know, creative expression. Being able, I have so many clients who are models that are beautiful that do not look beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, dude, what? Do you see yourself? How do you get, you know? But it really, it's about, it's about our reflection. So now, beauty luxury is just the foundation of a very large scale. Creative expression is in everything that I do. And yes, I am a billionaire, and it's not from seven weeks. <laughs> it comes from so many other things, but most of all, it's going to be because I'm ready to give back to people who are ready to accept. You know, I just want to give back. I want to give back. I want to be able to innovate and give them something that they didn't have before. You know, whatever it is. Like I figure, I've learned from each individual client and every day. Um, I have a client who has, yeah, let's show you her. I'm going to try to link it up, and the sound is going to be best we can. Deuces. Thanks for listening, guys.